Haydn had a problem. And it was a delicious problem of his own making. Because the last time he was in London, touring with his symphonies, he'd come up with a huge hit. And it was his surprise symphony, Opus 94. You'll recognize the slow movement. The audience went wild for it. So he had to come up with another symphony that had the same mass appeal. What he did in the end was he chose one of his um, military marches and he developed a whole military themed symphony out of it. Let me just play you an idea from the, the first movement. Hopefully, that sounds like two military fifes just piping away as they march. But the big theatrical effect comes in the second movement, where he takes actually quite an unassuming folk tune and transforms it. So here's the tune that would have initially been played on a hurdy-gurdy. Very simple tune but then he puts it in the minor and brings in a whole battery of percussion instruments including a bright triangle the timps the cymbals and the bass drum it's a clattering effect and it would have reminded audiences of the day of the turkish marching bands the audience absolutely loved this effect and it comes back again in the finale just imagine though as an audience member, seeing those percussion instruments lined up at the back of the stage, a bass drum, cymbals, and wondering, when's he going to use it? It's a great sort of theatrical build-up. There are other military ideas that get sneaked into the movements as well, like a, a bugle call. And fanfares also in the trio later on. But it's not just these military effects, I think, that give the symphony its popularity. It's also the fact that every single melody, every single idea in this symphony is jolly, hearty and utterly unpretentious. And it would have appealed perfectly to the upper class British audience of the day. Haydn certainly knew what he was doing.